I'm, I'm glad to be here and, and uh, it's good to be with all of you, even at a distance. And uh, we're one in spirit, so praise God we're part of the, the same family, the family of, of faith, of, of believers, and the ones who are beloved of the Lord. And it was cool that, that Bill read the psalm about trust. Um, it says that, that he will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. And when I was on my way over here, um, I was actually listening to a song called Trust. That was the title of the song. So, so today's portion is called Yitro, and it's the 17th uh, portion in the Torah cycle. And the reading is from Exodus 18, uh, 1 to 20. And um, I think there's a few more chapters in there, actually. I didn't write them down. And uh, Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 7, verse 6, and 9, 5 to 6. And in the uh, New Testament, it's 1 John 5, 1 to 11. So in last week's uh, Torah study, God brought Israel out of Egypt he parted the Red Sea to save them from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Their God provided for the needs of his people in the wilderness by raining down manna from heaven and bringing forth water from a rock. But remember, even after all of those miracles, the, Is the Israelites, they were still prone to complaining, and uh, which is something that we're all prone to. So we have to... We have to uh, uh, consider consider our our hearts our attitudes so this is a cool portion I, I, I like this this uh, this reunion with uh, Moses' father-in-law so I'm going to read that from Exodus uh, 18 verse 1 it says Jethro and and uh, by the way Jethro is Yitro the the title of the Torah portion is um, that's the Hebrew for Jethro so he was a priest of Midian. So he, he was from a pagan land, and, um, and yet this story shows, shows his heart, shows, shows his faith, shows that he's coming to faith in the one true God, and, and just his love for, for Moses and his people. So Moses' father-in-law heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home along with her two sons. The name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And the other was Eliezer, for he said, The God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. And when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and two, two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardships that had come upon them in their way, and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, and that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because in this affair they dealt arrogantly with the people. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. So this is just an amazing scene where he's there with, with all the people, and he's there with Aaron and the leadership of Israel and, and worshiping the true God, this, this man who really would have been a, a pagan priest, um, he's come to worship the one true God. Later on in in the uh, in Exodus in in chapter nineteen, I'm going to take you to a pretty um, amazing story where they're gathered uh, before Mount Sinai. So let's read from Exodus nineteen one. 
on the third day, or on the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai and encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I have done to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's, that's incredible. This whole group of people that were gathered there, this is what the Lord is telling them, that you have been chosen and you are going to be a people before me, a treasured possession. And the people all agreed to follow the Lord. They said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses is, is told by the Lord to go up to the mountain and all the people have to, to stay away from the mountain. It's like untouchable. And, um, and so Moses is going to go up and, and, and he's actually going to receive the, the Ten Commandments um, in, in verbal form at this point. And the Lord speaks to him. And when he comes down from the mountain, this is, the, this is what the people, how they responded. This is Exodus 20, verse 18. Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid, and they trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin and it says the people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was now let us turn to um, the the um, New Testament portion of of this Torah uh, portion and it's Matthew 19 and I'm going to read 16 to 20 and so this is the story about a rich young man who goes up to Jesus, and this is what he says. A and behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And, he said to, and Jesus said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. So these are the commandments that God gave to Moses on that mountain, that mountain that was smoking, that mountain that was, that was filled with blazing fire and smoke and, and the glory of God that made the people tremble. And Jesus said, or he said to Jesus, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And so it's interesting here the the commandments that, that Jesus gives are mostly from those ten which are so famous, the, the Ten Commandments, but but the, he also gives this commandment, um, love your neighbor as yourself. And remember, he also says that that is the second greatest commandment. But why doesn't he give the first greatest commandment here when he's speaking to this this um, this rich man? He doesn't give all the commandments, just those and the second greatest. So what is the greatest commandment? It's 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And that's what he was really trying to get this rich young man to see that he was really lacking. He doesn't say it, but he says, come follow me. Because in following Jesus, that is the step towards fulfilling that commandment. Because Jesus is God. And that's what he requires of us, that we pick up our cross daily and follow him. We're supposed to, to lose our lives and in him we gain, we gain everything. In another um, gospel, it says that when Jesus looked at this rich young ruler, it says he looked at him and he loved him. And, and we don't know what happened with him. He went away that day sad because he was full of riches, but you know, in time, he may have come to a place where those riches became less and less meaningful, and he may have turned again his heart to the living God and to Yeshua, and he may have received his Messiah, and he may have come to the place where that one commandment that really sums up and brings all others in, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, he may have he may have accepted that and walked that out. And that's what I hope. I hope that for myself, hope that for each of us. Let's turn to Isaiah. This is, um, this is the, uh, the prof prophet's portion of the Torah portion. This is um, verse 9, 5, and 6. And this is a picture of, of, of Jesus. And, um, and, it's, and, it, and it shows it. it it shows more about who he is. It says, For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So this is... God who became flesh, but he is glorious. It says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I'm going to end with this, how, how in the book of Hebrews, it relates that time and that passage about them going to the mountain and, and, and witnessing that fearful glory of the Lord. It relates it to the new covenant. It says, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word would be spoken to them because they feared. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And listen, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So therefore, since we are receiving this kingdom that can't be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God, our Yeshua, is a consuming fire.